Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Back to the Future, Part 2, Movie Thoughts. So I'll start with the point that both me and my girlfriend kind of noted. When they see, you know, evidence of 1985 changing back to the original 1985, or at least the one that Marty and company and the audience prefer, we see Biff's hotel matches change into Biff's auto mechanic matches. Okay, I wasn't around in 1985, but I doubt that auto mechanics made a habit of handing out matches. That's a hotel nightclub kind of thing. That's not really a mechanic kind of thing. Maybe if it had changed into like a business card, even though that would still be kind of weird, but you know, they had to work in, you know, it's clever that the matches were from the hotel and that, you know, and we of course have to see them change, you know, to, and I like, you know, Doc is first committed, then he's commended. And, you know, George is murdered, and then he's honored. Since this shows us 2015, I feel a distinct urge to demand that I see a hoverboard sometime in the next four years, because those things just kick ass. I'm not even... I don't skateboard, you know, I'm, I'm not the type to, but I just want them to exist. I don't even need to use one myself necessarily, but those are just awesome. One thing that I didn't think, I think this does resolve most of what it brings up, but the whole chicken thing, I don't know, I haven't watched the third one yet, so maybe it's there, but it seems like this movie was the one to bring up that, you know, Marty can't back away from a fight. When he, you know, when someone calls him chicken, he goes ahead and does the stupid thing that he shouldn't do. And that does get him into trouble in 1955 with the new Marty, you know, the one that we're following. That continuity. Anyway, you know, he walks up, gets the door smacked in his face from the other Marty running away, and, you know, the almanac ends back up in Biff's hands. And that's, you know... Yeah, it didn't seem like that was resolved. To me. I thought Doc was funnier in the first one. I didn't think he had that much funny stuff in this one. Him walking back and forth right after they land in 1955 and Marty trying to follow him, that was kind of funny. And the line with, you know, Marty, it's all my fault. And, oh, that's in the past. You mean the future? Right. Yeah, funny. But, the first one definitely had more, I would say, really funny stuff with with Doc. Maybe also because it, you know, kind of introduced him. It seemed to spend more time on Doc, or at least more time where he really did, you know, wacky movie scientist kind of stuff. Especially in 1955. I like how the first movie kind of sets up you know, the first movie doesn't feel like a setup for this one, but this movie uses that as a setup and kind of just goes with, you know, everything that happened. The first movie still happens. Now they just have this further layer of things going on, you know. I thought that worked really well and it was quite clever and you know it's really you know we love the first movie so seeing something you know relate to the first movie in that kind of way it's not that kind of typical sequel that you'd get where they just you know try to recreate you know I I do think that 
the 2015 setting and seeing the same characters again, seeing them there, and seeing them in the alternate 1985, that works really well because what really makes it work is the way these characters relate to each other, you know, how Marty is and how his, you know, personality is, he's, you know, anytime you see him, he is kind of, you know, immature, and, you know, even when you see an, you know, what, 40, 50-ish him in, you know, 2015, he's still kind of immature, you know, he gets himself fired for no good reason. You know, him, Biff, Doc, you know, you have to see these characters, you know, relate to each other, and how it's colored by, you know, where they are, when they are, and, you know, other than the brief glimpse of 2015, you know, it's again in 1955, you know, where we, you know, we all already went there, but, you know, it's fun to see you know, more, more of that. It, it worked really well in the first one. I haven't watched the third one yet, but I do think that these first two really have, you know, with the first one, as far as I know, the second one wasn't planned when they made the first one. You know, the cliffhanger was kind of just a throwaway joke. You know, the to-be-continued text was only added on, like, VHS copies or something, you know, originally. And, you know, with the second one, you know, it's it's kind of, the first one goes back to the past and, you know, changes something, you know, drastically. At first, it, yeah, I'm not going to go into details. People who've watched it already know. The second one, you know, we see a glimpse of the future and then we go back to the past again to fix the present because it's now gone into an alternate one. You know, this is also the one to introduce the whole alternate timeline, you know. And in the first one it's just what happens in the past will change the present. In this one it's, you know, there is now a new present and we have to redirect it to the, to the, the old present, you know, more time travel stuff. I think that it was very good that we didn't see too much of 2015. You know, the new technology was, you know, fun enough, and I get, you know, why they'd go in that direction. I don't think that, you know, several of the things that we see them use, I don't think would be that, you know, with the self-tying laces and the refitting jackets, I'm just thinking, okay, what if those things break, and you have, like, jackets, you know, strangling people by getting too tight, or, you know, the shoes just will not come off, or they refuse to tighten when you really need them to, you know, stuff like that. But, you know, I get it. It's, you know, a lot of fiction that shows the future has this utopian kind of ideal of it, although it's not an entirely utopian ideal with the whole, well, you know, there are no lawyers anymore. Okay, that's partially utopian. I, you know, that is something that we do want. But we do at least also want, you know, fair trials, so. But I don't think an entire movie set in the future would be a good idea for a Back to the Future movie, because part of the charm, part of the appeal, is seeing Marty alter the present and fix the present. You know, that's, that's where the excitement comes from in this movie, most of it, you know. Some of the time it's him almost getting gunned down by various people. The, the, you know, so it needs to spend a lot of time in the past where things can be changed to alter the present. And it also just felt like, you know, with the future, there is already a Marty in the future. It doesn't need... You know, that Marty needs to work things out for himself, part of the way at least. It can't be that you, you know, you go to your future and you fix it. You know, you have to, you, you get to see your future and then you learn from the mistakes you see yourself making in the future and then you do better when you actually get to the future. You don't go to the future and f fix things up like that. You know, it's more, you know, the past needs, you know, 
Marty to go back to and fix things and you know get them to a preferred state. Please rate and comment and hey if you like this video that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.